Hi everybody, I'm Mike Gwendolyn. You know, one of the biggest problems you have when you're out there boondocking is making those batteries last long enough to really enjoy it. Hi, I'm Camp Skunk, and I'm going to show you how uh, Mike and I rigged up a second inverter to allow him to get a lot more use out of his batteries. The famous Camp Skunk? Stay tuned, you're going to learn how to do this yourself. So what is this thing and why do we need it? Well, I don't need it, Mike, you need it. See, I already have one of these, but what it is, it's a smaller inverter. Uh, everyone who gets one of these uh, road tracks with larger battery setups gets one of these 2500 watt big inverters. Uh, but the thing about inverters is when they're on, they use power even when they're not doing anything. This one uses about six to 10 amps somewhere in there just being on the big one. Now, if you if you only if you're just charging your laptop or, or tablet or whatever, you don't need 2,500 watts. Uh, so what what uh, I did on mine and what I've just finished doing on yours is get a smaller 400 watt inverter. Uh, the best thing to do is make sure it's a pure sine wave inverter. So the the modified sine wave inverters will work, but. Uh, uh, they, they're, they're hard on some of the electronics, and it's better just to go ahead and pay a little bit extra money. I, I can't remember, what, what did we buy these things A little things over $100. Yeah, about yeah. 100 bucks. okay. So anyway, um, and these inverters come with two plugs. You can plug your 110-volt uh, thing in, and there's also a USB port that you can charge from. But... Uh, so how much so, can you can you charge? You can charge a laptop, a tablet, yeah, a cell it's, phone? Yeah, it's 400 watts, and I would not go much over 250 or so. You know, it's rated at 400 watts, but uh, there's a little fan in there that'll start to annoy you if you run it too hard. Uh, and uh, so, but this needs 12 volt power to make the 100, 110 volt uh, current that you're using, just like the big inverter. Now on the big inverter, you can see here's the 12 volt power coming in, these four out cables are uh, these big red and black four-aught cables are coming from the batteries to the inverter. And what I've done is I have tapped in, I've got uh, uh, eyelets that, that go on these two bolts under these protective covers, and off comes a, a smaller but still pretty robust red and black wire, positive and negative, and that goes up to this little inverter here. We have just routed the wire up behind the headboard so that it's uh, it's uh, out of the way and it's not going to get yanked on and so forth. And uh, now this, this smaller inverter has uh, the 12 volts from the battery that it needs to run. But when you leave this inverter on, it doesn't suck 10 to, uh, 6 to 10 amps just sitting there. It, it uses maybe half an amp being on and idling. Whenever you're adding anything to your system, always remember circuit protection is your friend. If you will notice, this red unswitched battery wire comes about four inches and runs into this 30 amp circuit breaker. And that will keep your uh, wire shorting out. This, this power right here is, is very dangerous. This is unswitched battery power. You can arc weld with this, whether you're doing it intentionally or not. And uh, you have to be very careful with this. So whenever you wire anything, make sure the first thing you can install in the line once you get off the battery terminal is, is circuit protection, a fuse or a circuit breaker. And on this one, we need 30 amp. Yeah, that's close enough. For my usage, I, I run the TV and, the, and my uh, satellite internet set up and maybe charge a, uh, a, you know, the iPad and the, and the laptop and so forth. And I, don't, I get nowhere near 400 watts. And that's on whenever either one of us is awake. So it's basically on most of, the, most of the time, at least 18 hours a day. Do you use your inverter very much? Yeah, I need that. The big inverter I need for my microwave convection oven. Uh, and... Uh, air conditioning, if they had it right Yeah, there. yeah. Well, no, it, it's... Yeah, I have a 12-volt air conditioner. But if you have a regular air conditioner, you're going to need to turn your inverter on. Uh, to run that and uh, but and I just turned it on use the microwave turn it off I don't really need you know I, I've got these two plugs on this little inverter and that's where all the, the stuff that I keep on all the time runs so that, this is why you can boondock for days and days and days at a time right I am not you know if this thing is sucking you know uh, six to ten amps 24 hours a day that's that's more power than i'm using for my stuff so your overhead is higher than you know than uh, 
than the uh, actual power that you're using to run your appliances if you use a big inverter all the time. In mm -hmm. my first setup on my Chevy, I had one big inverter and it was on all the time and the batteries tended to go low in a hurry, you know, because uh, one way or another, all that power is getting used up. But this is a, this is a good setup for boondocking because if you're going to be using a little bitty things like TVs and, and uh, charging your, your uh, handheld appliances, you run it off this little inverter and leave your big one off. Thank you, Camp Skunk. As always, I appreciate your expertise so much. Well, it's now been several weeks since we installed this little inverter. And I have to say, I am extremely pleased with the results. Before, it was overkill. I was using my big inverter, the one underneath the sofa here. I was using that for everything. I was basically using it to charge my cell phone and my laptop and my camera batteries. Now, those little tasks can be done so much more effectively with this 400 watt inverter. If you'd like more information on this inverter, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Meantime, do me a favor before you leave, subscribe to our RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. I'm Mike Wendland. Thanks for watching.